What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. So I am beyond excited to see what got nominated for this year's Critics' Choice Awards. I'm also excited because I actually had a hand in voting this year. I was accepted into the CCA a couple of months back, and um, this made me very nervous, but I wanted to see some people and some movies get in there that we haven't really seen the love for yet, like a Paul Racy, like a Delroy Lindo, maybe a Mickelson. We'll see. I haven't actually looked at the nominees yet, so I will be finding out as you guys find out, but I need your comments down below. And if you enjoy this series of awards videos and you want to leave this video a thumbs up, that would be awesome. But let's get into it today. I will be looking at the nominees. I will be reacting. I do have my predictions laid out. Now, if something gets snubbed, I may need to sit and rethink on a few things, uh, but we will, of course, be doing what should win each award, what will win each award. That's how we always do it. All right, let's get right into it. And I uh, had to scroll all the way to the bottom here, thanks to The Hollywood Reporter for this list, but we're going to start with best score. And I won't lie, I already looked at this one because it's been on the screen the whole time. Uh, no big surprises here. We see Soul, we see Mank, we see Tenet. It's actually nice seeing Minari get in there. I thought Minari had a great score. Uh, in terms of uh, my belief system here, it's going to be very consistent. I believe Soul should win. I believe Soul will win. Now, it is a bit of a tougher task because Tenet has an incredible score. Ludwig Gorenson did an awesome job, and it's very, very close for me. Uh, but I think Soul takes it. I think Soul should take it. But again, it's going to be a tougher race than people think with those two movies. Let's continue on with the first one that I haven't seen yet, and this is Best Song. And uh, pretty much as expected here, I, I thought Speak Now would get a nomination, voted for that, Fight For You. The surprise here is actually Everybody Cries from The Outpost. I didn't have that in my predictions, so... That's interesting to see. Uh, I knew Tigress and Tweed would get nominated for the United States and Billie Holiday. My choice for what will win this award is actually Speak Now for One Night in Miami. An incredible song, one that left an awesome impact. What I think should win, though, I really loved Fight For You from Judas and the Black Messiah. It was impactful, uh, it resonated, and it did a great job of adding to the story. Uh, but at the end of the day, I won't be too upset because, again, the song from One Night in Miami is incredible. Let's keep going. I don't know what's next. All right, next is, okay, foreign language film. We have another round, which, of course, is what I voted for here. Uh, collective, La Llorona, The Life. Um, we have Minari. Okay. See, oh, all right. See what they do with these. Uh, with, they they title it foreign language film, which I guess technically fits because Minari, foreign language, but it, it's not a foreign film to me. It, it's a very American film. So again, I just don't see it fitting all that well in that category, um, which actually worries me because now I'm like, is Minari going to get nominated for Best Picture? So we'll see when we get there. Uh, but I love seeing another round on there. This kind of this kind of screws up my predictions because I had another round should win, another round will win, and now that Minari's in there, I don't know. I, I guess I'm going to keep my predictions just because Minari is a big surprise. I'm going to say another round will win, another round should win, but um, Minari very well could take it. That threw me off. All right, let's move on, <laughs> let's move on um, to the next one, and this is Best Comedy. And let's see if my, uh, my votes made it in. The King of Staten Island, check, and Palm Springs. Check. Those were uh, my votes for that. Then we have the 40-year-old version. Love it. Absolutely love seeing that get in there. My first thought is not a comedy, but I guess when I think about it, yes. Uh, On the Rocks getting in, no surprise there. And then The Prom, once again, you know, I think The Prom is a fun time. Do I think it's an awards-worthy film? Not necessarily, but it's no shock to see that film on there. Uh, in terms of what I believe should win, you guys know. It it's Palm Springs. At this point, I love Palm Springs, one of my favorite movies of last year, but will it take home the award? Um, I think, you know, part of me, because Borat got so much love, I, I, I think Borat may actually take this award, which is baffling, to say the least. I would give anything to see Palm Springs take this. And part of me believes it will, but there's just so much love for Borat right now. I think that's what ends up taking it. But again, my heart, y'all know where my heart is. I love that movie so much. And let's continue on here with, what is this one? Best visual effects. 
We have Greyhound. Interesting. I, I didn't really expect that, but it makes a lot of sense. Uh, the Invisible Man. Yes. Mank, of course. The Midnight Sky. Yes. Mulan. Uh, Tenet and Wonder Woman. It, it's actually a good category. And kind of the movies other than Greyhound, but now thinking about it, I think Greyhound does have great visual effects. So this is a solid list, but I think it's also a fairly easy prediction. Now, you know, you could be looking at one of these movies that's a bit more prestigious, like a Mank. Okay, uh, but I truly believe Tenet is going to take it. I think Tenet should take it. What they were able to do with the special effects here, uh, you factor in, you know, kind of a spoiler going in reverse through half the movie. So I thought it was really, really cool what they were able to do. And I really hope, um, you know, I will submit my vote, but we are able to recognize Tenet for that achievement. So let's keep going. Best hair and makeup. Let's see. We have Emma, Hillbilly Elegy, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Well, there's the three I expected. Mank, that's a good choice. Promising Young Woman. And the United States versus Billy Holiday. Uh, pretty good list here. If you're asking me what should win, uh, you know, we're going by hair and makeup here. And the movie that really stands out to me is Emma. But I don't think Emma wins it just because... It's not that prestigious movie that I think everyone's looking at. Um, I think it goes to either Ma Rainey or Mank. I'm going to go Ma Rainey's Black Bottom as my choice of what will win this award. No shocker here, to be honest with you. Let's move into Best Costume Design. We have Emma Mulan, The Personal History of David Copperfield. I'm actually really glad that one made it. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Promising Young Woman, and... Mank, another good list of categories off the top of my head. I can't really think of a film that was uh, drastically snubbed for that. This is another one that may be an unpopular choice, but um, I have to go. I have to go Mulan for what should win. I don't think it will. I think Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is going to take this one home as well. Or Mank, it could very easily go to Mank. Actually, the more that I think about it, the more I could see that splitting, right? Ma Rainey takes hair and makeup. Mank takes costume design. Let's switch. I'm going to switch my vote to Mank. I lied to myself. Uh, I'm going against what I actually wrote down here. But, um, yeah, I think Mulan should win because the, the costumes in Mulan were absolutely outstanding. It just doesn't really strike me as a movie that will. Let's move into the next category, and that is Best Editing. Oh, my goodness. I'm um, not really seeing anything that I didn't expect here. Trial of the Chicago 7 Mank. Yes, please. Tenet. Love seeing Tenet get in there. Oh, that is awesome. I didn't think it would make it, but it did. That's great uh, because we're looking at editing here. Very well deserves that. The Father, Sound of Metal, and Nomad Land. This category is tough. I honestly, what should win? I'm between The Father and Tenet. And the trial of the Chicago 7, those are the three that really stand out. I think the father should take this, but I don't think it will. I think the trial of the Chicago 7 will. Uh, all three of those films, I think, are made, not strictly, but uh, slightly, from the editing. Uh, because it's so brilliantly put together, I think the trial of the Chicago 7 is going to take it. But please, the father, oh my goodness, the editing in that movie is subtly what makes the film great. All right, next category here. What is it? Uh, best production design. The personal history of David Copperfield getting in again. That is nice to see. Uh, News of the World, Tenet, Mank, Emma, and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Wow, what a stacked category. No huge snubs off the top of my head. Maybe a Mulan. I kind of expect a Mulan to get in there for production design strictly. Uh, but this is a good list. It's also, in my opinion, uh, an easy one to choose. I think Mank should win. I think Mank will win to recreate classic Hollywood in the way that they did. Uh, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It's a beautiful movie to look at. And, you know, the fact that they're kind of walking around on movie sets in the movie tells me it's probably going to take home this award. And it should. It deserves to be in production design. Our next category is cinematography. And a big surprise here. First Cow getting the cinematography nod. That's really cool. Uh, actually, I, I kind of think it deserves that. Mank, Minari, Nomadland, to Five Bloods. To Five Bloods, uh, that's a bit of a shock there. Tenet and News of the World. Yeah, this is a really good category as well. Uh, and it's also a difficult category because... I have a few on here. Again, you know, you think about First Cow. Yeah, it actually is outstanding. Mank, the cinematography, is gorgeous. This is going to be a very unpopular opinion. Honestly, out of all of these films, and I know it's not the most prestigious, it's actually, it's, it's kind of surprising that it made it in. Um, Hoyt von Hoytema Tenet cinematography is just incredible. I, I, it's one of the best looking movies I've seen all year. 
So that may actually be my choice. It's tough to put that over Nomadland. Uh, I do think Nomadland is going to take this. I am between Tenet, Mank, and Nomadland. And honestly, you know, First Cow kind of sneaking up on me as really good cinematography. Uh, so Nomadland, I think, will take it. But, but something about Tenet, man. I just love the cinematography in that film. And then we have Best Adapted Screenplay. Already in the screenplay categories. Uh, news of the World. Yeah, a bit, bit shocking. News of the World made that. Uh, the Father, One Night in Miami. No shock there. First Cow. First Cow. Oh, that is a shock, man. I, I like First Cow. I, I enjoyed the movie, so that's a bit of a shocker. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And Nomadland. So, thankfully, my choices are on here. I think The Father should actually win Best Adapted Screenplay. But I don't think it will win. I think Nomadland takes home this award. Again, Nomadland is that kind of movie that is, uh, I, I feel will do very well when it comes to the Oscars. And I feel the same way with critics. The Critics' Choice Awards, I think Nomadland takes it home here. We move into Best Original Screenplay. Ah, Minari, Promising Young Woman, Mank. Never, rarely, sometimes, always. Genuinely nice to see because when I think of that movie, here's what I think of uh, that works really well. Well, A, I thought the acting was really good, but also... The screenplay. And a, a bit of a surprise there, but it shouldn't be a surprise. I actually think it deserves it. Uh, the Sound of Metal, nice to see. And The Trial of the Chicago 7. So lots of Sound of Metal love so far. Do we get Paul Racy? Do we get Paul Racy? That's the question. So uh, my choice for this is probably going to be The Trial of the Chicago 7 winning. And it's very close to that being the one that should win, but I honestly believe one of the most shocking, interesting, and uh, different screenplays that I was able to check out this year was Promising Young Woman. So that may actually be my choice of what should win here. You can't go wrong with Sorkin. I've learned that all throughout my life. He is one of the best writers there is, but I believe Promising Young Woman should take this one home. I don't think it will, uh, but that's my choice. All right. Now, I believe, oh, no, we're still in the, oh, this is the directing category. We have Lee Isaac Chung from Minari, Promising Young Woman, Mank, to Five Bloods. Ooh, Spike Lee got in for to Five Bloods. Interesting. Regina King, uh, Trial of the Chicago 7, and Nomadland. This one is very, very easy for me. Chloe Zhao should, will, this is her award. I mean, all of the others Congratulations, thanks for playing, and I think most of these are well-deserved to be on here, but, 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 it's Chloe Zhao. It's hers, the Oscar's hers, the Critics' Choice Award is hers. Let's move on. Here's one I was interested in. Defy Bloods, Judas and the Black Messiah, Ma Rady's Black Bottom, Minari. This is acting ensemble, and um, this spells good news for Defy Bloods and Judas and the Black Messiah when it comes to Best Picture. We'll get there, uh, but uh, Minari, yeah, man, this is a great category. This is a great category. So far, the Critics' Choice Awards, they've done a good job. They really have. Well, we did a good job. I'm a part of that. It's also an easy one to choose. I think Trial of Chicago 7 will and should win. The acting ensemble in this movie is not fair. It is freaking outstanding. So, well-deserved. Good to see. Let's move into, and I believe this is the, yes, the Young Actor-Actress category. Uh, we have writer Alan from Palmer. I didn't think. Oh, that's great. That is awesome. Um, I will mispronounce his name. From the life ahead, Alan Kim Minari. Uh, never rarely, sometimes, always. Okay, nice to see the midnight sky and news of the world. Uh, this is a great, a great cast of really talented up-and-coming actors and actresses. But we all know that Helena Zingle uh, is going to win for news of the world because she's been getting love in the supporting actress category and other award shows, and I just think it's going to be consistent. My choice, though, is actually not Helena. I loved Alan Kim and Minari. I loved him. I, I, I thought he was wonderful, perfect, and obviously the film kind of revolves around that character, well, the entire family, but uh, I just thought it was a brilliant performance. But this category is absolutely great. Let's move into uh, Best Supporting Actress, and we have... Maria Baklava from Borat, no surprise there. Ellen Burstyn got in. Uh, Yoo Jung Yoon got in. Olivia Coleman, Amanda Seyfried. I mean, this is perfect. This is everyone we wanted. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we have six there. You're going to get random numbers for each of these categories. I like this list. I like this list a lot. Um, you know, part of me wants to say that Glenn Close is actually going to take his, this home. I think Olivia Coleman because it is the Critics' Choice Awards, right? 
I think Olivia Coleman has the best shot here. So I'm going to say she will win. I'm going to say she should win. Followed closely by Ellen Burstyn and Yu Jung Yu and Amanda Seyfried. Uh, honestly, any of those could win. Uh, but when the father comes out, I think Coleman has a great opportunity to make some noise here. And um, I think that's well-deserved noise. So a great cast uh, of actors there. Best Supporting Actor, Bozeman, Cohen, Kaluuya, Murray, Odom Jr., and Racy. That's the one I was looking for. That's the one. I have to pause. I have to tweet really quick. I'm pausing and tweeting. So even with that Paul Racy nomination, I don't think that changes anything. I think this is Kaluuya's award to lose, and I think it, it deserves to be his award to lose. The guy, um, you'll know when you see the film if you haven't seen it yet, but the guy is just outstanding in this movie. So uh, we can move on from that one into, and here's one I'm curious about, Best Actress. Let's see. Viola Davis, Andre Day from United States versus Billie Holiday. Okay, so does that mean Sidney Flanagan? Ooh, Sidney Flanagan from Never Rarely, Sometimes, Always. That's nice to see. Vanessa Kirby, Pieces of a Woman, Frances McDormand, Carrie Mulligan. Zinde. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. That's such a random number. But I like seeing Zendaya. I still don't, you know, know if she's going to get the fifth Oscar spot, but it's it's nice to see her get in here. In terms of who I believe will win, I just keep, I mean, it's up in the air. It, it could be Francis, Carrie, Viola, Vanessa. I don't know. I, you know, I'm going to shot in the dark here and say Francis McDormand just because of the love for Nomadland. But again, it's so tough. Who do I believe should win? I think I'm going to stick with Vanessa Kirby just because of that just pure emotion uh, from Pieces of a Woman. I think she probably has the least likely shot between the four that I just mentioned. It may come down between Mulligan, Davis, and McDormand. I'm going to say McDormand here for the Critics' Choice just because of the love, but hey, don't know. Best act? What the heck? Ben Affleck? I did not expect to see Ben Affleck, but that's not a bad thing. Oh, that's great. So Ben Affleck has been campaigning very hard. Uh, FYC packages coming our way, and um, they've had Q&As with Matt Damon, and that's great to see, man. Listen, one of the most... A, a beautiful, forgotten, but now not forgotten performances of last year. I loved Ben Affleck in The Way Back. That is awesome to see. Riz Ahmed, as expected, so good. Chadwick Boseman, Ma Rainey, uh, Tom Hanks, News of the World. That's a little unexpected, too. Anthony Hopkins, Delroy Lindo, Gary Ullman, and Steven. Yes, I love this category. I absolutely love this category. No surprises. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. Well, did, did we expand to eight to get Ben Affleck in there? If we did, I'm not upset. I, I think this is a great category. Nothing changes, though. I still think Chadwick Boseman is going to take home this award. Um, who should win, I believe, is between Chadwick and Anthony Hopkins. I think I'm going to give the slight edge to Hopkins there because his performance was brilliant, but I will not be upset to see Boseman take home that award. Who out of these eight get the Oscar nom? Uh, that's tough. But I think all all eight, honestly, are, are deserving to be on this list. And the big one. Best picture, The Five Bloods, the first one I see. That's okay. Uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Mank, Minari. News of the World, a little shocking. Nomadland, One Night, Miami, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and The Trial of the Chicago 7. Off the top of my head, News of the World is a tiny bit shocking. Um, because, let's see, what got snubbed? What got snubbed? I don't see Judas and the Black Messiah. That is really shocking. That is really shocking now that I think about that. First glance, you know, interesting list. This could be your best picture. I do not see... Oh, I don't see the father. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't see the father. That is also shocking. You know, what movies would I put the father over? Well, honestly, most of them. I, I think The Father is a brilliant film. Uh, but Judas and the Black Messiah really, really shocks me, and maybe it's because it hasn't come out yet, but again, they've been really pushing screeners and FYC content, so yeah, those are the two. Those are the two. And so this kind of messes up my what should win because my what should win was, I wrote it down as The Father, but The Father's not on there. So that kind of throws me off completely. I guessed my next favorite movie on this list, and it was The Trial of the Chicago 7, but if you guys are keeping up with me on Letterboxd, I actually moved Promising Young Woman above The Trial of the Chicago 7. I also moved Minari above The Trial of the Chicago 7. So I, I think for what should win here, I'm going to go with Promising Young Woman, even though it's very close. Listen, I like this list uh, of nominees a lot. A lot, actually. There's just some movies missing here. I don't know if News of the World deserves to be on there, to be honest with you. 
Uh, but it doesn't really shock me, I guess. So my choice of what will win, though, is very easy. It is Nomadland. I think Nomadland is, you know, now if the trial of the Chicago 7 does indeed take this home, then you're going to see a bit of a shift in terms of momentum. Uh, but right now, Nomadland has all of the momentum. I thought Judas uh, would have a good shot, maybe, but it's not even in there, as is the father. So a little shocking there, but it does not change my prediction of Nomadland but it does change my what should win, and I think that may be Promising Young Woman, but it's nice to see Sound of Metal getting that love. I think that is well-deserved love, and, and it's nice to see Defy Bloods getting in there because we know it's been snubbed a bit lately. And Minari, you know, Minari got the foreign language film. I thought it could maybe keep it out of Best Picture, but it did not, which is great. Uh, Minari is a beautiful, beautiful film, and yeah, that's it, guys. That's my... Um, that's my picks, my reaction to all of these categories. Again, it was so much fun to uh, uh, place my choices. And honestly, a lot of what I voted for ended up getting in. But when you look at some of these snubs and shockers, I'm still a little bit surprised with some of the, uh, some of the nominees. But I cannot wait to submit my final votes for all of these categories. You guys are truly the best. Thank you so much for watching. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I've been tweeting throughout my thoughts on all of these different categories and uh, just, um, you know, Oscar season is a little bit more tough, a little bit more tough to predict this year. So we're going to continue to run off of what we're seeing here with the Critics' Choice, with the SAG, with the Golden Globes. And um, all right, guys, come back for more Oscar coverage, awards content, and I'll see you very soon.